and welcome back. And yes, you must have seen this coming. We are going to continue talking about those Synology hard drives. Yes, this is a channel that is predominantly about data storage, more about network and DAS and stuff like that. But Synology's announcement into a range of new hard drives is something we definitely have to talk about. And today we want to talk about how these drives compare, at least on a specification level, with that of another brand that we talk about a lot, Seagate Ironwolf Pro. Now, Seagate Ironwolf Pro is one of the best drives out there in terms of network attached storage. It's always kind of been three brands uh, pretty much predominantly in the hard drive sector. When it comes to NAS hard drives, it's generally been down to two, Seagate, iWolf, and WD Red. And now Synology have brought their own hard drives onto the market there. People are obviously, myself included, going to draw comparison. So what we're going to be doing today is looking at a lot of the specifications of the new Synology HAT5300, and we're going to compare them against that of the Seagate Ironwolf Pro. But before we go any further, some disclaimers straight off the bat. Much like last time, let's carry on. So first and foremost, I am going to try to be as unbiased as possible. As mentioned, we cover a lot of NAS on this channel, and therefore I am very, very au fait with the Synology environment, Synology portfolio, and pretty much their whole ethos in general. But I'm going to try and remove myself from as much of that as possible, just to look at it as objectively as possible as a first-time buyer. There is going to be the odd reference to their hardware. There has to be. But I'm going to try and limit it as much as possible to just analysing the drives here. Next, you may already have noticed these are graphics here on screen. I do not have the physical uh, new Synology drive right here. It was launched like two, two and a half days ago, and I don't have one. We will be doing like real in-depth analysis and comparison between this drive and Seagull Ironwolf uh, Pro, WD Red Pro. We're going to be looking at some Ultrastar, some Exos, stuff like that. Probably more appropriate drive comparisons I'm to touch on later on there in terms of data center class drives. But for now, we are looking at these spec for spec on their respective data sheets. I'm not looking at any specification that is not like for like across the two of them. So certain ones to do with uh, AFR and certain failure uh, comparisons and stuff to do with like MTBF and MTTF. I'm not including those. I am only including specifications that are like for like. So without further ado, let's get straight into it. Now I know it is not the best way to compare these things, but unfortunately, it's 2021. Things have not changed price. People are always going to compare drives with how much it's going to affect their wallet. And that goes from home to business users too. And I don't think it's something we should ignore here in any comparison. Now, first and foremost, straight off the bat, it's worth highlighting Seagate Ironwolf Pro. It's certainly the more affordable of the two between these two drives. We have compared these Synologies with some WD Reds already, and the prices were very, very similar, but in the case of the Synology drives and Seagate, it's a bit of a disparate there. Looking at my notes slightly off camera, the Synology drives available in 8, 12, and 16 TB arrive at 205, 310, and 400 pounds, respectively. Not including the VAT, and that price may fluctuate slightly wherever it is that you buy it. Uh, compared with that of the 185, 285, and 355, respectively, of the Seagate, Iron, um, Seagate Ironwolf Pro drives, the result is those drives are a, a noticeable degree cheaper. And once you order these in the sort of bulk they need to be used, these are drives designed for between 8 and 24 or maybe even more bays. The result is you are looking at a decent chunk of saving there once you really start to upscale out. Comparing these drives like for like, is that actually that fair? Because Synology, with these drives, it should be highlighted, have produced uh, what I would class as an enterprise data center-esque class drive and placed it into a bracket where a lot of brands have put uh, Pro Series NAS drives, which is arguably a rung slightly lower than that in, in, terms, in terms of architecture. So if anything, they're pricing a lot of other companies out of the market with this solution and you you know, as an end user, it's going to be really good to see that. I say that because even though the Seagate drives are lower in price tag, what you're actually getting in terms of architecture is actually arguably a degree larger from the Synology hard drive there. And you'll see that later on when we talk about some of the lifespan stuff, the durability, and a lot of the environmental um, architecture of these drives that the Synology will claw some of that back but for now certainly those Seagate Ironwolf Pro drives are a better price point for a number of users out there that are trying to scale up their spend in terms of a NAS server and drive media. 
So if we move forward from that, we can talk about performance. And performance, unfortunately, we're always going to be looking at the classic read-write. We're going to be looking at the performance of these drives, and both Synology and Seagate have um, uh, published speed performance thresholds for their respective drives. Generally, I would call these read. Very, you know, very rarely do they highly publish write. Read will always be slightly higher. But what I will also highlight is these are performance benchmarks on a single drive and neither of these drives should be utilized in a single drive environment that would be just madness for how much you're spending on these setups so even though we're talking about individual drive speed it's worth highlighting that the speed you will see in reality will be significantly higher because you will be using them in larger larger rate arrays and the performance internally and externally should be greater than this but between the two of them I can argue that the performance is near enough identical there's barely 10 megabytes per second in it now, they're both um, 7200 RPM drives. They're both a CMR or PMI, in other words, uh, perpendicular magnetic recording or conventional magnetic recording. But they do have slight differences in caching. With um, the uh, Of the Synology range, there is a combination of 256 megabyte cache or buffer zone and a 512 megabyte cache on the 16 TB drive. Whereas on the Seagate side of things, they are all up to 16 TB at least, all 256 megabytes in size. The result is that the pair of them have got the same architecture, but there's just a pinch more cache space available on the 16 TB Synology. And when you look at the performance between the two of them, the 16 TB is the one that's got the slight peak height in terms of performance there but it is still largely identical i'm sure it's there on screen so i don't have to read it to you but 230 245 and 262 versus 240 240 255 uh, megabyte performance on the 8 to 12 and 16 terabytes respectively i would say that you can't really give one advantage over the other but that extra cache on the synology drive there will really show itself off once the drive has been accessed by a number of processes at a single time. But I will also touch on that um, although it's not really to do with speed, I do think it's worth highlighting once again that the Seagate Ironwolf Pro series arrives in many, many more capacities because it has been in operation for a long time. You are looking at 1TB, 2TB, all the way through to 18TB, where the caching does improve on that drive. Whereas the Synology series is only available in those three capacities right now. Now, some might argue it's a new series, it's a new range. They're obviously introducing it gradually, and it will grow to those greater capacities. Um, and also, for those of you that are looking at Synology NAS hard drives, the HAT5300 and going, I'm not buying some new hard drive brand. It's not new. They are utilising a uh, Toshiba Enterprise Drive class series of drives, the MG series. And these drives have been around for quite a long time and rate very well on Backblaze as well. So, again, a lot of the specs and information for these drives it is worth checking out those Toshiba data sheets as well to learn more about them. Now, if we move into the lifespan side of things, this is kind of where Synology have really pushed where they're going with these drives, much like they did with the SSDs when they were revealed part of the way through 2020, the SNB and the SAT5200. Their range of hard drives really does focus on sustained performance and definitely that workload. Now the big takeaway here is the idea that Synology's reported workload is 550 TB per year. Now what that translate to, uh, translates to is their drive can deal with up to 550 terabytes of data each year within the five years reported utilization. They support it for that amount, it should be able to go higher than that, but they, uh, they guarantee that it can live for that uh, time frame. Now, when you look at some of these drives at 8, 12, and 16 TB, the big thing there is, in particularly in data center environments and large-scale NAS utilization, now these drives are going to be filled and rewrote and rewrote and rewrote with data a great deal. And that is where that enduring factor and the persistent and sustained performance lives. Now, on the Seagate side of things, it has a reported 300 terabytes there. And again, that is because this drive is designed for a specific area of the NAS and server food chain. That's why they have a separate range in the Exos series, which does a better job of challenging those numbers overall uh, on the HAT5300. 
but against that the Sinol I'm sorry the Seagate Iron Wolf Pro one of the things it does have and they're the only brand that has it is inclusive data recovery services now we have talked about this a lot in the past there and again data recovery services aren't so much a safety net they're more of an insurance policy and the fact that it's included if everyone's ever tried to use um, data recovery services certainly on a multi-drive raid environment it can add up to the thousands of pounds and that is one of the things they include for in terms of uh, lifespan and inclusive services with the Seagate Ironwolf Pro series of drives where that sits with you on a 550 TB to 300 TB uh, um, a workload of availability there that's going to come down to the what you, uh, how you think and what you worry about. They are slightly different concepts, but certainly something inclusive of each drive that has a different niche market in mind. Now, if we move into environmental stuff to do with power consumption, noise and the like, it's worth highlighting that of the two, and again, by a pinch really, the Synology series, the HAT there, that has a lower power consumption. Now, lower power consumption per drive differs wildly once you're looking at these 12, 16 and 24 bay systems on enormous rack mounts with 1000 watt redundant power supplies. Um, power consumption is slightly less important but then it, then it all adds up and even though it isn't a huge difference between them, you have to multiply that factor and where that impacts things like heat, where it impacts things about vibration and ultimately the drive stability long term. They both have near enough identical noise levels reported at DBA and again, as mentioned in my previous video, noise levels on drives like these become largely immaterial because you are talking about such huge systems that the noise of the servers themselves far outstrips the noise of any drives internally. If you're installing these drives in a little four bay system, then it might make all the difference there. But in terms of environmental impact and power consumption, very, very similar indeed would of course dedicated um, controllers and firmware internally that deals with things like vibration, heat, and more in these large scale environments. They're both designed for large scale environments and therefore they have been geared and tuned specifically for that. But on the subject of firmware, that takes us through very neatly to what I think is one of the best qualities about the Synology platform. Um, unfortunately, that is gonna be followed up with what arguably is one of their worst, and it is to do with firmware. Now, the Synology range of hard drives, once again, they are Toshiba drives that have got Synology geared firmware internally. It means that these drives have been designed specifically for Synology systems, particularly Synology enterprise systems. So you are using a drive that has its controllers geared, not just generally to the size of rack mounts, but geared towards the very systems they are going in, which a smaller benefit as that might be, every bit counts. And if that ekes out a few extra single digit percent of efficiency and performance, all the better for some companies where that can literally add up to thousands of pounds. Also, that firmware can be updated directly from the Synology uh, software GUI DSM. Now, for those that aren't aware, updating the firmware on a hard drive is no small task. If you are looking at the drives inside your NAS, generally hard drives will have firmware on them. And again, all the brands are like that. They, you know, as time wears on, they change and tinker and improve and more and more to that software. Um, the, uh, the firmware inside these hard drives is improved. So you might have drives in your system right now that you bought a few years ago when newer firmware has arrived, that you could update the hard drives to towards. Now currently, and there are some alternatives to this, the bulk of NAS brands require you to power down the NAS system remove the hard drives one by one, connect them to a client device, which has then third-party client software. Um, and again, you can use Seagate tools. Uh, their tool um, bench is very, very good for checking for firmware updates and applying them directly onto the hard drives there. We've done some tests there in the past when we were looking at resetting SED drives and updating their firmware, so do check out that video. But that is a, quite a big ask to start taking drives out of a 12 or 16 bay system, introducing them to a client gradually, updating their firmware one by one, reintroducing them to the NAS system and powering the NAS system up. It's a lot of downtime and also a lot of bare metal handling, something you shouldn't really be doing on a regular basis. The reason the Synology drives are um, advantageous in this regard is because if you can update the firmware inside the system, Yes, of course, you almost certainly have to dismount the storage system 
in the short term. Maybe they've got around that, something to do with raid and hot spares and stuff like that, but who knows. But the idea that you don't have to power down the system, the fact that you don't have to handle the bare metal drive to do it, and the fact that it is done within the technology system, perhaps even semi-automatically letting you know when updates are available, that cannot be overlooked, and that's a very useful feature to have at your fingertips. Now, the Seagate drives, the Seagate Ironwolf Pro drives there, do have Seagate Ironwolf Health Management. We've talked about it here on the channel before. So not only has it got those data recovery services built in, that you get up to, I think it's three years data recovery services. If your drive fails, you can go to their data recovery centers where they can recover it you know, spe spectacularly well. We smashed up a drive a couple of years ago just to show that service how it would work. But on top of that, you've got that Ironwolf Health Management where on the user interface of your Synology, your QNAP, your whatever, you can see the health of your drives. You can use far more tailored alerts and tailored drive um, health um, measurements to see if an impending problem is making itself known, even on a very small indication uh, there with regard to the drive wobbling in some way. Now, I did mention other brands there. That is a very large other point of contention between buying between these drives because I know a number of you, and again, when we first talked about these drives, did wonder about one, Synology locking uh, their systems to these drives or vice versa. And also, was it in any way viable or advantageous to use these drives outside of a Synology? Well, pretty much bad news for you there because... The newer generation, I said I wouldn't talk too much about hardware, but it is essential here, so stick with me. Uh, the newer generation of uh, the XS series, the UC series, the FS series, and the SA series, um, and that's the ones 21 and above, as they start to arrive in 2021, these are systems that will only be um, compatible with the newer generation of Synology hard drives. And by that I mean that they consider... The only support, uh, they, their warranty they provide you, they're only prepared to support that warranty if you use the storage media that they provide, their supported storage media. Because otherwise, you are using an unsupported configuration and their promises, their guarantees, with regard to their warranty, can potentially become invalidated. They've done that with their memory before, which is something we've talked about at length. I can see why they do it, because they're creating a complete contained system for the end user but i know a number of people out there aren't completely in love with being locked into a single drive now why did i bring all that up because the very the reverse is true with these drives if you buy the synology range of hard drives you can only use them in a synology now system small or big if you use them in any other system it invalidates um it will the warranty becomes unsupported so therefore those of you that are looking at the Synology drives with their arguably, you know, enterprisey, data classy sort of uh, specifications inside and thought, yum, yum, I'm going to buy those but not stick them in a Synology, it can ruin that five year warranty for you long term. Now, of course, Seagate doesn't have the qualms on that. They, although they did for a while have their own range of NAS systems, they kind of now produce uh, more fiber type um, storage, more large scale um one might argue leap level storage um but they still haven't removed the ability for people to utilize their seagate ironwolf and ironwolf pro series across a multitude of different nas platforms and that flexibility i think will be very very appealing to a number of buyers looking to buy their storage now the um the nature of synology's locking in on that compatibility there. I do think uh, there is worth looking at some of the exemptions. So for example, if you are using an older generation Synology system uh, that doesn't have the new Synology drives inside them and you're upgrading to the newest version of that model, again, XS, UC, SA, FC, FS, etc., then you're allowed to import those over, uh, migrate those over with that, invalidating the warranty. But Again, I think a number of users that are upgrading to our new wholesale model, chances are we'll get new media as well. And if not integrate that old model into their existing backup system, then they might use that, maybe sell it on, reappropriate it into a budget, ultimately get some of that investment back towards the new model. So I'm not sure if that's going to be hugely beneficial to most people. Um, me personally, I do love that data recovery that goes with the, uh, the Seagate uh, Ironwolf Pro drives. And again, it has been beneficial. I've heard lots of users that have utilized it at least for a missive 
uh, deleted files more so than actual physical damage but still they do cover that within there now where do you go from here when buying a drive well if you are looking at enterprise grade storage and you are looking at a new Synology and you're looking at those 21 series enterprise grade now systems then this isn't really a decision for you because you have to go for those Synology drives but when choosing between these two I think right now for the under new new grade Synology stuff with that flexibility in mind and the larger capacities, I think it is still worth considering those Seagate Ironwolf Pro Series drives because not only have you got the fluidity of the available capacities on offer to you, but the ability to have that Ironwolf health management and the ability to have that data recovery, I think counters that of firmware upgrades. That said, the Synology side, those drives, they are a lot better than a number of us would have thought. And although they seem to be going down the HP, the NetApp, the kind of top, top, top grade blob storage kind of um, integration um, companies, I do think what they're doing works for them. And a lot of people are making huge comparisons to Mac, which I'm sure um, Apple and Mac, and I'm sure a lot of the people at Synology are like, well, that's a shame, isn't it? But this has been the Synology range of hard drives versus Seagate's Ironwolf Pro series. We will, of course, be doing far more hands-on comparison between these two drives very, very soon. As soon as we've got the HAT5300 here, we're going to be looking just how good that endurance is. Does it live up to what they're saying? And ultimately, does it make it a viable choice in our hard drive you know basket right now on e-commerce but thank you so much for watching i hope you've enjoyed this video if you have click like if you want to learn more click subscribe there's a whole link uh, in the description a whole article linked in the description where we're going to a little bit more detail about the specifications on these drives a little bit more about the toshiba side and a little bit more on these drives as we learn more but otherwise thank you so much for watching and i will see you next time